Hello everyone, Matt Chapman here of Sky Sports Racing. Now, of course, the Welsh Grand National will be a huge race on Sky Sports in just a few days time. So I thought it's the perfect moment to look back at my 10 favorite Welsh Grand Nationals. Now, my number one, maybe my number two, three, four, five, they won't necessarily be the best horses that I've ever raced in the Chepstow Marathon, but there are reasons why they make it to the top 10. At number 10, cool ground, not just because Luke Harvey would never forgive me, and he is a horrible little man, uh, so he would never forgive me um, if I didn't put it in. But Cool Ground was terrific in 1990, a long, long, long time ago. And of course, he was a handicapped snip because he would go on and land a Cheltenham Gold Cup. On the far side, looking pretty strong as he comes down towards the third last. Caracol lad is the only one sticking with him as they come three out. And on the far side, Cool Ground lands two clear of Caracol lad. Rowlandson's Jewel's gone up into third. Yahoo, four outside edge, five in the pack token, six Royal Battery, seven. But Cool Ground looks like going one better this time as he takes two from home. Four clear now of Caracol lad, vainly in pursuit in second. Rowlandson's Jewel running on in third, but they come now towards the final fence. And it's Cool Ground coming to it. Over safely from Caracol Lad in second. Then comes Rowlandson's Jewel. Then comes Yahoo and Enverpack Token. And they run now towards the final 100 yards. And it's Cool Ground going clear under Luke Harvey. Caracol Lad trainly trying to close the gap. But he's not going to make any impression on him now. And at the line, Cool Ground from Caracol Lad, Rowlandson's Jewel, Yahoo and Enverpack Token. And number nine, I want to go back to 2003. Nigel Twiston Davis trained a horse called Bindery. Carl Llewellyn was the rider. He would also go on to great glories in his time, eventually becoming an Aintree Grand National winner. But he banged in the Welsh equivalent. At number eight, it's Miko de Beauchene in 2007. Long legs Andrew Thornton was on board. It was just a terrific horse race. And Miko de Beauchene, he fought. And there was huge emotion with Robert Orner, the trainer. At number seven, Dream Alliance. Who could leave out Dream Alliance in 2009? A horse who ended up having a movie written about him. Look, this was a Welsh success in the Welsh Grand National. That's special. Dream Alliance is on towards the second last. Silver by Nature in second. Then in third place, Miko de Beauchene, Bally Fit and Le Beau Bayer, the next pair. This is two from home. Dream Alliance is over. Three clear from Silver by Nature in second place. Miko de Beauchene, Le Beau Bayer, Bally Fitz and Co. The final fence for Dream Alliance and Tom O'Brien. He's over, perched up the horses next. Silver by Nature is pecking as well. They've got to bypass the last. And it's Dream Alliance who leads by five or six lengths. Silver by Nature is trying to close. Len Le Beauvais and Miko de Beauchene, but they're off up the running, and Dream Alliance leads by four lengths. Silver by Nature in second place. Dream Alliance hanging over to the far rail, but he's still holding Silver by Nature, who's coming with one final effort. But Dream Alliance, ridden out, will get home in the Coral Welsh National, and a fairy tale return from injury for Tom O'Brien. At number six, we go back to 2012. Mombeg Dude. Now, he was given arguably the greatest ride ever in the history of the Welsh Grand National. Paul Carberry, absolutely brilliant on a horse who didn't find jumping naturally. Final open ditch is four from home. In the centre, Triggerman. On the eight stand side, T for three. They've both gone past Giles Cross. Mon Big Du continues to close on the leaders. Then it's Our Island and Arva Supreme, but T for three has gone to the front. Going to the third from home. T for three from Triggerman. Giles Cross has gone wrong and he's being pulled up. Mon Big Du has been left in third and he's only five lengths behind the front two with Arva Supreme also running on and they've cleared away from Our Island. 
Ireland incentivizes next. Over two out. T for three was just in front, but Paul Carberry is bringing Monbeck Dude virtually alongside. Triggerman is only a length behind, and they're clear of Arbor Supreme. Want to jump in the Coral Welsh National, and Monbeck Dude makes a mistake at the last, but he lands alongside T for three. Triggerman is held in third. A hundred yards to go in the Welsh National. Monbeck Dude has gone from last to first. T for three is digging deep on the inside, but Monbeck Dude under Paul Carberry has just lasted home to win the Coral Welsh National. We're into our top five. At number five, Master Oates in 1994. Trained by the old boy Kim Bailey, Master Oates was just a typical, terrific staying chaser, and he had a bit of class as well. He'd win a Cheltenham Gold Cup. Four out now, and Master Oates jumps out to his left a bit, but lands over it safely in the lead from uh, Earth Summit, giving chase now on the near side from Chatham and Dakin's boy. He starts to get to work on Earth Summit now, but it's uh, Master Roats a half length in front of the open ditch. He sailed over it. Dakin's boy is gone. They've got uh, two fences, three fences left to jump. As they come now towards the second last now, he gets to work on Master Oates in the centre. He draws to it now, jumps it well. Ah, oh, Mr. Chatham's gone. He's a faller at that. Earth Summit battling away in second. A long gap to Capability Brown third, followed then by Gold Cap and Party Politics. But one to jump, it's Master Rhodes, who's ten in front, draws to it now. He takes off and he landed over it in great fashion. He's home for all money. In second placing at Earth Summit, a long gap then to Capability Brown, Gold Cap and Party Politics. Mistake by Capability at the last. But this is the easiest winner you've ever seen. It's a, uh, the Coral Welsh National on a platter for Master Rhodes. He cruises home the winner here by the best part of 15 lengths. Master Roach the winner. At number four, arguably the best horse to ever win a Welsh Grand National. Borough Hill Lad. Now, Borough Hill Lad was just a terrific, terrific horse for Jenny Pittman, ridden by John Frankham, and he mastered the Welsh Grand National. At number three, and there's a reason why we're standing here on the Pond House Gallops, of course, back in the day, the home of Martin Pipe. Because at number three is a horse who probably just about had the quality of Borough Hill Lad. In 1991, Carbills Hill had come over from Ireland and he just looked like a monster for Pipe. At number two, it's that man Pipe again. Bonanza Boy winning the Welsh Grand National in 1989. Just a small horse, but he jumped, oh, he jumped, and he did some incredible things in his career at Kempton and at Chepstow. He stayed all day, and he became a standing dish in the Welsh Grand National. Bonanza Boy's raced up now to take the lead. It's Bonanza Boy on the outside has jumped to the front now, gone two lengths in front of Team Challenge. Then on the inside is Charter Hardware and further back is Roller Joint. In the Welsh National now as they come towards the next one, it's Bonanza Boy about three or four lengths in front with three to jump. Bonanza Boy, Peter Scudamore comes to it now, pops over it well. Now Charter Hardware on the inside is next, followed by Team Challenge, then Cool Ground is running on well. At the second last though, it's Bonanza Boy nicely clear, rushed through the top of it but got away with it. Bonanza Boy, six or eight lengths in front. Charter Hardware in second, Cool Ground is third, followed further back then by Team Challenge and Roller Joint. But Bonanza Boy, can he make it two out in a row? He does, he stands over at four lengths in front. And in the run to the line, it's uh, Bonanza Boy who's going to win back-to-back -back Coral Welsh Nationals. It's Bonanza Boy, kept going by Peter Scudamore, is coming up to the line to score in great style. Bonanza Boy pushed out, going to win by 10 or 12 links going to be close for second cool ground gets it on the outside charter hardware third so here it is ladies and gentlemen my greatest welsh grand national of all time and these are not perhaps the best horses ever but in 1992 a certain mc pipe trained the first four home run for free leading the way for Martin Pipe. And before we have a look at the great race, let's just have a quick word with Martin and just see what he thought about training the one, two, three, four. I thought it'd be fantastic to bring you in at this stage and just ask you how great an achievement you felt it was at that time to train the first four home in the Welsh National. 
I was delighted, obviously, and thrilled to bits. Never expected to get the first four. It's hard enough to get the winner. Uh, but we managed the first four, so we were very fortunate. Bonanza Boyce trying to get past Captain Dibble back into fourth place. They've got three plain fences to jump in the Coral Welsh National. Run for free out in front. Got close to it, but he's over. Clear of Riverside Boy. Mini Home is finding little. Bonanza Boy is next. So it's a one, two, three, four for Martin Pipe at the moment as they reach the second last. And over it. Run for free. Very awkward over that and tired. Riverside Boy is really doing well in second. Chased by Mini Homer and Bonanza Boy. And there's one fence to jump in the Coral Welsh National and it's run for free and Mark Perrett they come to it they meet it flying they jump that well from Riverside Boy Mini Homer and Bonanza Boy then Belmont Captain and on the run in it's a 1-2-3-4 for the Martin Pipe Stable at the moment run for free and Mark Perrett keep their unbeaten record this season a tremendous front running performance from run for free and Mark Perrett for the Martin Pipe Stable then Riverside Boy second Mini Homer third and it's close for fourth between Captain Dibble and Bonanza Boy